Welcome to Q&A Selling Online with answers to questions about creating an online empire, promoting products, or building a brand. Your host, private label and e-commerce entrepreneur, Quinn Amorm. Welcome back to the show, my friends. Today, I have here with me Tusif Riaz. He's the CTO at Inventuli, a tool that if you haven't heard about, you're going to hear about it today. It's it helps with inventory management and forecasting. It's an AI-based tool, uh, and it works across multiple channels like Amazon, Walmart, Shopify. This is what I uh, got from their site. So um, we're going to talk to um, uh, Tosi Frias. And by the way, if this last name sounds familiar, <laughs> he is the brother of Omar Riaz, the founder of Utasker, which is like one of the biggest uh, Amazon agencies in the world. So, Tosif, welcome. Thank you, Quinn. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me for the podcast. I really appreciate that. Yeah, definitely for the introduction. And it's really great talking to you today. Thank you. So you you still work with uh, your tasker, correct? Yes, I do. You're the CTO? CTO? Yeah, I'm yeah. a chief technology officer for your tasker. How big is that right now? Um, so if, if we talk about uh, your tasker, right? So, ta- so tasker is a leading e-commerce consulting workforce. We are um, um, uh, we are on a Forbes, okay? We are on a you know, faster growing company for 2021 in a, in a digital marketing area. But any company or any organization, you know, you have, they, they need the technology people, right? Uh, for example, when, when um, your tasker is working on PPC management or, you know, their um, 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 graphics and all those things, they need some sort of technology on the back. And for example, yeah. how to do the forecasting, how to, you know, um, some of the uh, AI-based solutions they needed to do that right now. So this is something I'm doing for your tasker. But when we talk about inventory, management, which is inventory, right? So um, uh, what happened is seven years we've been in industry for your tasker. And what I noticed is that we were using a bunch of tools for inventory forecasting, okay? And what happening is that they're ex- exporting the data and they're using their own like a seasonal forecasting, you know, adding some um, like, you know, advertisement marketing data in it and then forecasting and all those things. So I said, you know, since I have a background and uh, from technology, which is uh, uh, big four consulting workforces, I work as a developer. I work uh, eight to nine years as a developer for Polar Florin, Conal, oh. um, Dell EMC, uh, Calvin Klein. I have I have worked on a Calvin Klein inventory management system in the back end. So, so I said, you know what? We can create something based upon data that how we can forecast the accurate forecast based upon historical data, based upon seasonal forecasting, based upon trends, based upon marketing data. And then you can have a, not the not the 100% forecasting, but it's like near to accurate, like 60 to 70 to 80% because mm-hmm. forecast is always forecast, you know? Exactly. So this is a little bit about my introduction and a little bit about inventory and my role with the your tasker. Yeah, so I, I know it can never be 100%. If somebody says it's 100%, just run away from them. <laughs> right? That that's, is true. That's impossible. But just for, for the people that are listening, mm-hmm. uh, often people think, because I have talked to somebody that says mm-hmm. uh, their inventory management mm-hmm. takes them like mm-hmm. 10 minutes a week. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I say, if it takes you 10 minutes a week, Mm-hmm. You're not selling enough, or you probably only have one SKU, mm-hmm. right? Because anybody mm-hmm. that if you are selling and if you have a ton of SKUs, mm-hmm. it, I mean, it's a task on its own. On its own, I have people on my team that that's what they do, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to be honest, so, I don't mm-hmm. know if they're using any software. <laughs> sure. right? They are doing a lot of manual efforts, Quinn. <laughs> yeah. So if they're using software, they are doing it on their own. Mm-hmm. Uh, if not, they're doing manual efforts. Yep. So, so tell me then, the inventory, you came up with it, like mm-hmm. you said, because your tasker needed it. So mm-hmm. that's how you develop it. And then it yep. came to the public. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Y- yes, it is. So, um, Quinn, let's take a step back and talk about how important the inventory management is, okay? When you said like 10 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Well, 
depend like I would be asking them a question if they say 10 minute that mean they are like there's something wrong or they're too smart exactly. or they have a one skew or they don't have a sale there's a tons of our different questions out there right so if we take a step back and think about how important in inventory management if, if when I used to work for these brands right even any company any seller okay their inventory is the key component for everything. If you have a more inventory, okay, and you didn't plan enough, okay, you you lose it. If you have a more less inventory, you still Amazon thinks about you're not serious about your business. Your 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 scores goes down. There, you know, your everything goes down. For example, you know. So what I'm trying to say is that inventory is a key uh, area for any sellers if they don't plan right. Okay, mm. they forget about like. When they when they talk about inventory plan, they forget about the lead time. Okay, they they don't know every vendor has a different lead time. Okay, then they they think is like last year. Like usually people talk, think about like last year. You have um, um, yeah, I had a for example fifty thousand dollars sale in March, right? I'm gonna have a same sale. Well, that's not gonna happen because you need to have a plan ahead for that March six months ago. Okay. In order to do, do do that, you know, you need some sort of inventory management software, or if you're doing an Excel, right, that's still fine. But you need to understand the environment. Like COVID happened, right? None of person has planned for COVID, right? What yeah. if, but when happened, right, then you have a possibilities out there, which you can plan ahead to have some safety stock. No one talk about even safety stock, right? So these all areas is very important for as an inventory management. So I, when, when I looked at, in, in, in your task, a lot of sellers was, um, you know, they were not doing great just because they have a lot of out, like stock days are like a 500 days or like a 1200 days out there because they did not plan enough. So that is a one area which when, when we build in your tasker or the software, we made sure is that, hey, you know, we, we look at like, for example, vendor management. When you, when, when you create a purchase order, the, the time, amount of time is, is, is you're getting from the vendor to your warehouse, that is very critical. Yep. Like, for example, that's really depend on your PPC budget as well, right? So if you are running campaigns and all those things and you don't have inventory, right? That's, that's a negative impact on your seller account, right? So, so this is this is a little bit about uh, like how the inventory is helping from from vendor to till forecasting. Okay, another uh, challenge which I'm gonna bring it in, Queen, is about and I don't think so. Any any person like for example, when we talk about new product launching a new product. Okay, so in a new product, how do how do we do the the forecasting for the product? How do we know? that we need pieces like that. There's, there's a very good softwares out there where you see that, hey, you know what? Um, there is like, you know, you will have uh, this amount of sales. This sub, everything is like, you know, there's an average sales out there. You can have uh, some estimates, but still you can't plan the inventory management for a new product because you don't have enough data out there. But what we came up with the solution is that now we can, based upon category and subcategory, and if you put the, uh, like a, a comparable, are similar ASN, you can plan the forecasting based upon the marketing data in our system. That's something new. I don't think any software offers that, but we do that because that is a very important for, for new product forecasting. And then when you have a new for, a product forecasting, then you can take the, from there, you can use the historical data and seller velocity and then forecast it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, one of the problems that I had mm -hmm. uh, was over stock so yes. have over inventory because uh one of the things and you mentioned it mm -hmm. running out of stock is terrible yep. for for your ranking for your organic mm -hmm. ranking yes. also being low on inventory uh is is bad for for your ranking geographically mm -hmm. because if i don't have a single product in inventory in texas if mm -hmm. somebody searches it amazon is not going to show mine because they can't deliver it mm -hmm. in the prime period Yep. Right. So they, they will show alternatives. And uh, definitely I won't I, I can be, you know, ranked number one somewhere else, but not where I don't have inventory. So what I did at one point was overstock certain products that were my best sellers. Mm -hmm. But as you know, having too much stock somewhere means there is so much money sitting in a warehouse. Yes. And sometimes there's another product that needs that, you know, needs that that inventory or the money that's in that inventory. 
so I guess depending on on the size of the seller, this fixes mm-hmm. different problems. Yep. Right. Uh, so will this help me with that? If will it tell me which product needs it the most? If I can only pick, for example, I don't know if you can only have 500 grand worth of inventory, mm-hmm. where would I put it? Would it help me with that? So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to repeat the question so you can, can help me to understand. Yeah. So you are, we are talking about the overstock. So for example, if we have a 500 items, our unit sitting is an FBA warehouse or FBM uh, warehouse, okay, uh, or your warehouse, okay, and then um, does our software helps to let you guys let, let the let the seller know that how we can utilize that that 500 stock or no? Instead of sending the 500 for one product. Mm-hmm. If it will help me prioritize mm-hmm. which product I should put more inventory into. Yes, yes. Okay. So, so what's going to happen is, um, um, so again, the that you brought a very good point by the way that overstock. Okay, because the reason is that. Um, uh, when I used to sell, sell on online 2014 and 15, right? So my issue was, okay, that 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 I had a I had a, so many items sitting on Amazon a warehouse, and I you know I my credit card was zero, okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I I did not have a money to buy more products, and that the product was selling, I don't have a money to buy that product, which is I ordered the wrong one, right? So. That goes back to the inventory planning, okay? So if if your 500 sitting there, well, now that's a mistake happened, right? We need to stop ordering, first of all. We need to understand the historical data and the velocity and all those things to see that we don't need to order more. So that 500 units might take you to another two years or one year to sell it. So first of all, you know that, okay? Well, if you would plan well, right? For example, if 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 you would be sending these 500 units, right? You might have to look at the historical data for last year of seller velocity and the seasons and the trend. You might, I would might send it out. So my system will tell you that you need it like 20 in January, 50 in February, and and and, and 100 in March because March is a seasonal or there is a, there is a people more more people are buying it in the summer and all those things starting it up and April you know all those things so definitely our software helps with that and 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 make sure that you don't go overstock or run out of stock or you know stock outs so this is the major area where we help you and also um, uh, make sure we we make sure that there is like a like for example, if the new products is existing product, so every products and every you know that Amazon side, right? It's it's a different way to do the forecasting. So yeah. we offer three different type of forecasting: seasonal forecast. We offer, uh, we just launched the new product forecasting where we're bringing the marketing data. Then we launched the weighted forecast where they will see the average days on a back end and then forecast that how much weight it should be for the the, the product and all the. This is in a pipeline, but we're going to be launching next week for that forecast. Back to your question, yes. It does help to make sure that you don't go overstock. Perfect. Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing th- since it is AI, it takes into consideration historical mm-hmm. data from yep. demand like Christmas, uh, summer, winter, mm-hmm. uh, Labor Day. It, it takes data from the past. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, well, well. What ha- when we talk about artificial intelligence, right? So when we when we say that historical data, that that is something is already there okay Mm -hmm. now well we pull six months you know it's like seller decide that which is which uh, how much time they want to use 30 days 60 days 90 days one year two years up to them how comfortable they are Uh, but when we talk about ai right so ai is the, the 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 model we use is it's what happened is that in our system when the seller um, uh, 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 connect the store with our system. And what happened is that our system, when it connects with the sellers, Amazon, what we do is we, we, we look at the, each and every product and then we pick up the product and then our system goes to the, to the Amazon side and look at it and then create a customized model for, um, um, for the, that particular product. That's everything happening on the back end that based upon the season. For example, what if, the, the product A, same category, is selling 50 items a day for every month. And then product B is the same thing, similar category, everything same, and selling maybe 60, 20, 80, 100. So we need to think about, okay, their average too, because if they improve the PPC, so this is the AI where they look at the different trends, different behaviors, and then suggest 
that what it should be for you to buy the product. And then what happened is that when the actual sales comes in for that month, then it's also that tells them that what's going to be for next month. So it's about monitoring the competitors, okay? Mm -hmm. How they are behaving and how they are doing. Because, because if you have a great, like if someone is doing a great PPC job, right? They're doing all the right contents, okay? They're optimizing their listings, right? The inventory is going to go up. Okay, and then you need a more stock. So these all areas, what we do is we monitor their listing optimization, everything. Then we forecast. So that all AI works on a back end. Okay, front end you will just see the forecasting model. You will say, well, you know, I I, I saw that in a March we had a thirty items, and now I'm seeing that we're gonna have a twenty two item. Why? Because it's, a bit, it's not because of histor historical data. I'm like, well, not because there is something happening, and AI says that you need to send less eight item because you're not gonna sell it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming we have to input uh, mm -hmm. into the tool yes. our manufacturing time. So if it, let's yeah. say yes. it takes 45 days to build it, yes. and, and then we assume, let's say 23 days uh, in, the sh in the sea can to cross mm -hmm. the ocean, uh, the AI will not interfere with that. No. So, so what's going to happen is that we, when we talk about the lead time, right? When we talk about vendor management, purchase order, work orders, and all these all areas, right? So what happened is that first your forecasting model is created. Okay. So now you know that you need 20, 30, 50 every month, these items. Then we talk about the lead time. We set up the vendor in our system. We create the vendor, vendor A. And then we said that, well, it will fry take five days, this take five days. You decide the lead time, okay? How much time is going to take from vendor to the warehouse? So that is, we even though we are working on the automation of tracking the major vendor, when, uh, freight movers, to make sure that uh, freight movers, we can make sure we can track it, but that's still in pending. But you can manually update that this is going to be 60 days. It's, it's going to be for us to, um, to, to, to reach the inventory to the warehouse. So that 60 days is going to be count when you're going to, create the vendors and then you will in in the vendors you will have the you know different features out there like for example as soon as you forecast you go ahead click it and you can get the forecasting for that and then you create a purchase order so it's a one-stop shop you don't have to you know even though we can create a purchase order and then we can send it out them you can track it you can talk about it and all those things so it's a one-stop shop from vendor to till amazon warehouse so for me to be able to create those purchase orders that you said, mm -hmm. I have to enter the information from yes. my vendor and yes. then it will automatically send those purchase orders and just get. So, so one of the challenge, which um, uh, most of them I have seen in your task or when they were working on a different inventory management, uh, uh, sorry, inventory management for different brands, right? So they have to, every vendor is different, okay? So for example, one is in China, the other guy is in Italy, the third guy is in, in Germany, the fourth guy is in Minnesota, right? Mm -hmm. So so each and every one is different, right? So we have to maintain these also. The first thing is that the, the, we have to create these vendors and their profiles and everything. Once it's done, all you have to do, click on the purchase order, it goes there and automatic everything is created. So the system already knows that. So one-stop shop, you spend a minute to create a purchase order and it goes to them. And then when the inventory is on the way, you are seeing that the inventory is coming in. When you receive the inventory, the system will update. So this is how it works. So um, I hope I'm able to answer your question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now that brought up another question. Mm -hmm. uh, so imagine if I know that my my packaging, it comes with, let's say, 98 units per box, and that mm -hmm. box weighs 22 pounds. Mm -hmm. Does your system know that and make sure I order only four boxes? So when, when we talk about packaging and for, uh, boxing, right? So, mm -hmm. so well... There's another module which we'll call packaging forecast. Okay, that is something is different. Like that, mostly FBM users do that. FBA doesn't do that because that is a totally different uh, module. Like pop, uh, even the packaging you need for to send it out to the customer, you need a package to forecast it. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about like boxes, right? For example, in one box there's a uh, 120 units coming in, right? And then what we do is like. It's really depend on how you set it up the vendor. Okay, so if you are telling the vendor that you want to set it up on the box side, right? But in 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 the box, you can set it up how many units is going to be per box. Okay, yeah. so that's what's going to you're going to receive the inventory. Your system will update and let you guys know that how many units they have received. 
okay? And the box, Amazon doesn't track boxes, right? They will tell you that how many units or how many, it depends on which category and which product is this, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really the way you want to set it up, okay? You could do that. Okay, so if it says my product comes 120 per box, mm -hmm. I, I only want to send multiples of full boxes. For example, let's say 10, so that would be 1,200 units. Yes. So, so it's, it's depend like how, how do you, like, you know, what kind of product is this? What kind of category? So we have a flexibility to decide that what kind of product is this? Okay. Every category, every product has a different matrix. For example, like, you know, there's a product, you, it's, it's, they don't even have a sizing, right? When I yeah. used to sell women apparel, right? The maxi dresses. So these products has a different sizes and I figured out, oh my God, I need to add a more axle than medium because medium come in that packet, me two mediums, one small, one large and one extra large. So everyone buy extra large. <laughs> okay. So the so whole packet is waste. So what I'm saying is that every product is different. So you really have to define the product, how many pieces you need, and then system will generate from there. So when you, you say that it will have this automated reordering, mm -hmm. for example, imagine these, uh, you know, the private label on demand mm -hmm. where they supply supplements on demand, for example. Can the system connect with this vendor of mine mm -hmm. and place these orders, um, let's say, um, well, whatever, whatever the size of the order is, mm -hmm. it will place these orders with my vendor. If I want to not interfere, it can do that for me. Well, uh, the thing is that uh, when we talk about automating ordering, right? So that is something, again, um, technology, when we design any software, any solution, right? We want the pilot seat where, you know, you click on, you know, um, taking off or you switch, turn on the switch or off switch mm -hmm. and all those things. So we don't let system to decide to automatic order, but we let the, the, the person who's doing the forecasting because that is forecasting, not like plan, not the accurate, not the actuals. Mm -hmm. So our system tells that, hey, you need 50 items in now in January, right? It's a time to place order. So we give you a you know, sign that, hey, it's a replenish, replenish your inventory right now or order more inventory. So signs keep coming up, okay? All you have to do is that when you look at it, you click on the purchase order button, okay? And then it goes to the purchase, the, the vendor and create, you mm -hmm. create the purchase order, how much you need based upon the, the, the inventory we are proposing, all information is going to fill it up for you. You just have to create it and send it out. So I just have okay. to approve it. Approve it. Nice. Yes, that's, that's the right word to use. <laughs> nice. Okay. So it does everything, but it, it, does does, everything. it doesn't pull the trigger for me. Yeah, it doesn't pull the trigger. And nice. we do not want to that because that is something, if we pull the trigger, then, you know, definitely, if what if something goes off, right? <laughs> then you're responsible. Yes. Yeah, you're responsible for that. <laughs> and, then, and that's, again, anything which you forecast, okay, you need to review it. That's what I believe. Okay, yeah, I, I believe that too. <laughs> so uh, I want to have, uh, I mean, even with when, when it's the humans doing the ordering, oh, yeah. so, sometimes I look at it and I'm like, there's something wrong there. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, like, why do we have, uh, why do we have nine months of inventory mm -hmm. ordered for that product, right? Because if we can get yeah. it, if we can get you know it every 60 days, why do I have nine what I what I see in Queen, um, most of inventory management systems are that they are like highly relying on historical data. Okay, what which makes us a different because, to be honest, right? If you look at Amazon, right? You know, we all are sellers. We know. Like it's really depend on our marketing budget, right? If 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 we don't have a marketing budget, right? Are we, we're not gonna sell it. True. And True. and if we're not gonna sell it, what are we gonna do with the historical data, right? So so. Now, like I always say is that like, guys, if you wanted to do inventory management, the step one is look at your marketing budget, okay? Because that's going to decide that how much inventory do you need based, okay, definitely we need a historical data. That is a driven point. Well, mm -hmm. definitely. But again, if you have a historical data, then you need to know how much budget that time you spend it, how much your competitors spend it. So in order to get the right results, marketing data, historical data, okay? And then the trends, like what's going on in the marketing and what's your competitors are doing. These are all four areas we really have to focus to plan your inventory if you want to do an Excel, okay? Or if you want to do in a software, okay? Software will save your time, 
Okay, Excel will take the time. That's that's the difference between us and the software, like the Excel. That's it. Okay, the, every day, and then I'm, I'm going. I'm going back to your point, which you said that someone said that in, in ten minutes I can do that again. So. <laughs> So, so well, are they pulling the historical data? Are they are they looking at the marketing budget? Because in your tasker, uh, back in the day, we used to have issues that uh, as soon as new clients comes in, and and then you know my guys are very expert in uh, PPC and you know advertisement, you know, so they're looking at the what are the impressions are there, how they do the conversion, their ACOS goes down, and then you know they run out of the stock. And as soon as they run out of the stock, Amazon thinks they are not serious. Their whole listing and whole um, ACOS is goes up again, and everything is like right there like it's 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 in a drain mm -hmm. so so i'm use i'm not use, i'm going to use that example and say is that how important is inventory management gotcha thank you so uh the tool itself mm -hmm. we men we mentioned a few times inventory sure. inventory uh I i'm guessing the name just came from from inventory tool or am i wrong <laughs> so uh the name came from uh definitely from the, in, in, like we 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 thought that what kind of be an easiest name to call so we came up with inventory like inventory inventory because because the reason why we said that we are not only amazon focused okay this tool is going to like it's going to talk uh ship station it can talk to walmart it can talk to other all because i know there is a tons of tools out there which is only focusing on fbm and fba but but if if, if amazon sellers really wanted to move on to the to the walmart side and and this is this is something i i'm really uh, excited about walmart that i have ordered uh, two days back something from walmart and it came in two days really fast shipping and their service is super good and which is which is really mixing, making me excited. And in your task, there's a lot of uh, sellers are are moving towards the Walmart side, okay? And the customer mm -hmm. experience, when you know, Amazon has a very good had a, had a have a, Amazon has a very good customer experience, and we and and Walmart has a also very good experience now. So what I'm seeing is that consolidate consolidate inventory management. This is going to be another challenge right now because the SKUs are different. Their marketing data is different. Their trends are different. Okay. The, the, the customer experience is different. Yes. So, so our system is putting everything together and consolidate all this data and then forecast it for you. So, so this is something, you know, I wanted to just bring it in for you know, is that this is something we are offering to the all other areas. And another thing is that, which I wanted to add is most of the people, they use VAs, right? to manage their inventory management now fine they use most of the time they use amazon um, seller central they will give a permissions and then person goes there now they use software to forecast it so we excuse me we came up the idea is that every person who works on your inventory management they should have a logs on so our system monitors your VAs logs or what exactly they're doing. They're not, if what if they create a purchase order for 1000 units, okay? And, and and if they give them approval, right? So what's gonna happen, right? If they, if they make it like, because our, our um, um, software is syncs with Amazon and this is what it is. So what I'm saying is, that, 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 that we have the log information there, which is really helping you to monitor your VAs, what exactly they are doing on the system. Okay, so that, that's that's fantastic. So that it will tr connect to ShipStation, which is like yes. Shopify's shipping. Yeah. Um, and then Walmart also, and yeah. uh, eBay. The, WFS, which is Walmart yeah. Fulfillment Service. Yeah, WFS. Uh, and for those that still have the old Walmart sh shipping, which was Deliver, yeah. uh, do, do you does that connect to Deliver or just with the Amazon account? So, so. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, Walmart. Sorry, yeah, I was just trying to. So, uh, if you can, you repeat your question again because I think it's it's kind of so before. Mm -hmm. Before the Walmart fulfillment mm -hmm. service, mm -hmm. uh, the shipping service that they had for their Prime, let's call mm -hmm. it, it's not called that, but uh, it was Deliver. Deliver, deliver was, yeah. 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 So if somebody still has Deliver instead mm -hmm. of the Walmart fulfillment, yeah. mm -hmm. can you monitor the, the inventory that's at their Deliver? So, 
so that's a very good question, Quinn, by the way. And then we are going through right now uh, the same situation. And, uh, and, and I'm glad that you brought this question in. Um, so what's going on is that we we face and we, we didn't notice that this is something going on. And uh, recently, one of the customer had the same alert issue. So we, now we are working to integrate the, the delivery as well to our system so we can have it. But um, not all the Walmart sellers are using it. OK, but but. The, the, there is a few cases which we have right now, which they are using it. So we are working on it, but uh, by end of next month, we're going to be integrated with that as well. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before before Walmart fulfilled the, the, the orders. Yeah. If you wanted the badge, the, like the two-day delivery badge, yeah. the way to get it was to get do Del- shipping with deliver. So. Deliver. Yep. And that's like back in the day. The like a prime way. badge, getting a prime badge, right? <laughs> yes. And if you wanted access to Walmart advertising or mm-hmm. Walmart's PPC, you would have to use Deliver as well. Uh-huh. Uh, right now, uh, now you don't have to. But awesome. So <laughs> that's that's actually something pretty cool. So I, you can track all yep. the marketplaces and eBay. Yep. And eBay, nice. eBay, eBay is something you know. You gain. Um, it, it's it's a, it was like consolidate consolidation data is coming out because you use you ship it. You know, and and, and another thing which we have, um, I'm going to talk about is uh, creating a shipment. Okay, so this is a new module we are uh, we are working on. It's going to launch next week. Is about like creating a shipping and sees that where the shipping is gonna go. Okay, that's that's something uh, everyone is like now worried about. Like for example, as we mentioned earlier, the very good point that if your product is in California and you are in California and if you're in New York, and then you know sometime it doesn't click like that. Okay, it shows you that it's not there because Amazon not gonna ship it to you. So you're gonna ship it only the person who's from New York. And there's a in in New York they're gonna ship it that person like sell it from that person. So. What, what is going to happen is that we're creating the FBM module, which is like managing by the multiple warehouses. Okay. Yeah. So you can have the multiple warehouses can uh, ship it out using um, USPS, FedEx, and, you know, UPS, and then create a shipment to send out to Amazon and create a shipment for the customer. If there's order, FBM orders are there, you can create a shipment from there. So this is really going to help us to real time manage your inventory. So uh, to, uh, to manage your inventory. So this is another feature we have, which, which we're going to launch uh, next week, most probably. But then you can create all the shipments from from our system. Man, you are <laughs> you are working hard on that. Tool. How <laughs> yeah. many people uh, working at Inventuli right now? So we have almost uh, eleven people team, which is the developers and you know business um, uh, analytic persons and stuff. But to be honest, it's not eleven. It's 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 uh, whole your tasker. Like we are knocking every <laughs> single your tasker account manager. Hey. How, what do you think about, because we have like, you know, your tasker helps so far 1000 brands, right? And so so we can like any experience we have. So the, the best part about our software is that all the efforts, because this software is, we didn't create now, uh, like like yesterday, we have created yeah. for a long time ago, but we are using internally for your tasker to making sure that your, we can fulfill your tasker's requirement. So yeah, I would say the 11, but you know, we we are doing a lot of test cases and talking to our 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 sellers and you know asking them if they can give us a feedback and all those things. Okay, so it's it's obviously not the tool that the, the yeah. came out it came out yesterday. Yes. It's, okay, it's been years in the making. Yes. Yep. The experience is nice. Yeah, that's that's how things work. Right. Yep, that's how things work. So because I'm, 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 my background is from technology, you know, I've uh, been in the industry for such a long time, all these major brands, I work for it. So uh, it's my passion for AI, you know, uh, um, uh, from from building the softwares and all those things. So we're trying our best to have a better user experience and economical, also make sure that we can fulfill the requirements, like, for example, make people life easier. And like, uh, think about it this way, right? What if you're paying $70 or $100? That not matters to our $10 to the seller. You know what matters? The inventory is going to stuck in, into Amazon's warehouse. That is a more costly because you're spending five to $10,000, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know what? It's uh, often people think about what something costs instead of what it's going to do for them. 
And yep. I had that experience when it came to accounting. Mm-hmm. And I had, a, let's just say I had a cheap accounting that I had from years ago. And I decided to try the one mm-hmm. that has won all the prizes for their accounting agency mm-hmm. has won like 12 years in a row, the best accounting in, in this province where I live. And I tried them out. And it, the, of course, they did cost a lot more than the other one, a lot more. But what I saved in mm-hmm. comparison paid for them mm-hmm. for years. It paid, they paid themselves. It, it, so, you know, you know, Quince, uh, when, when we start that we're going to build this software, so I work some analytics, you know, I have my background from analytics as well. So I was looking for like some numbers that, so we gathered a lot of data to see that what's going on with the market, where we noticed that 29% of the sellers lack visibility or multiple platforms or unable to uh, reliable, like, you know, they can fulfill the uh, promises, like fulfilling the promise. So 29% yeah. sellers are not able to fulfill with their promises to sell, to, to ship out or do the inventory. And almost 1.1 trillion uh, uh, annually, the, they lost the revenue because of lack of like, uh, like overselling, result of overselling or run out of the stock. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then I see some other numbers. I'm going to pull it up because we did some analysis that time. Almost every year, 222 billion is lost because of inability to sync their inventory data to gather from different different areas. So this is from as annually, like people are like 222 billion, right? Mm-hmm. And if 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 we talk about these numbers, right, they're like people like 43 percent of retailers continue to practice manual inventory by using spreadsheets and pen and paper. 43, right now in the United States, people are talking about metaverse. People talk about the blockchain. Like we, <laughs> we, we are, we're talking about going to space, right? But still 43% uh, are, are doing manual inventory management. That's why they are losing $1.1 trillion revenue. And you know what? Mm-hmm. I, I did another podcast earlier today mm-hmm. with, mm-hmm. Uh, with somebody that worked at it's the guy that built one of the guys that built Google AdWords. Mm-hmm. And he was there for 10 years at Google building that. And we talked about something that Amazon used to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if they stopped or if I just unsubscribed from those notifications. But when you run out of stock, they used to send me an email telling me how much money I lost. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and I remember running out of stock of mm-hmm. one of my main products once. And I received the email from Google and I didn't run out of stock. Uh, mm-hmm. Just so you know, I didn't run out of stock because I forgot the order. Mm-hmm. I actually, they, I couldn't get any. I couldn't get any more. <laughs> so the product did mm-hmm. run out and I was out of stock for like four months. Which mm-hmm. was unfortunate. But I got an, an email from Amazon telling me that in the last 30 days from being out of stock, I, I had lost $93,000 or whatever from that one SKU. Mm-hmm. And I was already suffering, you know? <laughs> See, I was already suffering because I was out of stock and I knew it. On top of that, Amazon telling me how much I was losing. <laughs> that's- it was just adding pain to me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I think that's when uh, that was the last notification I got. And so I don't know if I turned them off because I was so pissed. Or <laughs> I remember, you know, it, 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 this is this is what it is. Um, um, uh, to make a better decisions, you know, you need analytics. Okay, you need the data. Okay, to make a better decisions. Yeah. Uh, we as a people, right? We make decisions based upon our emotion. Like for example, if, if you really ask me, right, when I have a cup of coffee in my hand in the morning, right. I really wanted to, you know, fly. I wanted to, I wanted to do certain things, right? When the caffeine level goes down, I wanted to get some rest, you know? This is how normal human being works, right? So, but if you have a data front of you, right? Exactly. Emotion doesn't, you know, let you, um, um, uh, doesn't hold you off, right? What you can do is you can make a right decision. That's what it mm-hmm. is. And that's the major retailers, sellers, they do mistakes that if they're getting more sale, they get excited, they order more. And I can share you one, one of the uh, 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 funny uh, uh, story from my personal experience. So I used to sell a scarf, you know, women's scarf yes. back in days like seven, eight, eight years ago. And so 
I got scarves, okay? And I had a zero knowledge about that time, Amazon. I knew it like that time was things were really simple, right? You can you can list a product and start selling, right? You don't need even advertisement, yeah. okay? Then I learned about um, advertisement. You know, you can some, you know, you can learn some PPC, you can just put the keywords and all those things. So what happened is that it it, it was a uh, um, it was uh, October, okay, and I ha- I ordered like a five hundred pieces from the scarf, some different colors, you know. I was just testing it. It sold in ten days, right? Mm-hmm. And then I got excited. I'm like, oh my god, my business is going up, right? I ordered thousand pieces, okay. Now without looking any data, okay, it's all emotions. <laughs> okay, yes. so then it came, it sold, okay. Now it was mid of December, okay. Watch. I said, you know what? I'm going to get now a 3,000 more pieces, okay? Hmm. 2014, December, till now, I still have 2,500 left. (laughs) (laughs) So the lesson learned was that a data, which really helped you, the historical data. So, you know, I I was like, what I'm saying is that now people has a lot of different technologies out there. They have Excel sheets, they manage the data. But back in days, you know, we, I was a new seller. I was excited, you know, all those things. But what if we'd have a right software or proper inventory management? I have, I would have used the historical data from other seller or something like that to see that how much inventory and then look at the seasons, look at the trends because every in scarf, right? Every scarf has a, a trend time. Like it's a time when they needs to go out and there's a new scarf needs to come in, right? New design needs to come mm-hmm. in. So I miss that these are these parts, right? And you know what? I was here. I was here laughing as you were saying that because uh, this is, I mean, a side note from Eventually, but I was probably one of your competitors <laughs> because wow. I, I, I don't, I don't sell it anymore mm-hmm. uh, just because it was very seasonal and oh, mine, seasonal. and mine were probably even a little bit more seasonal than yours because I launched. The mm-hmm. heated scarves, you know, oh. you ever see the heated scarves that had a battery pack mm-hmm. and uh, basically they would warm up f- for really cold winters. And I launched those uh, before I launched, uh, I don't know if it was 15, 2015 or something, the electric heated scarf. Nice. I had never seen one on Amazon. I had never seen and then I launched those, and then everybody. Are you still selling it? Because that makes me excited. I wish I could buy it. <laughs> I don't. I don't sell them anymore. Okay. Uh, yeah, I gave those up because then a lot of people start selling the same ones as me, mm-hmm. because of course you you can't stop the manufacturer from selling it to everybody. Uh, mm-hmm. So the only thing that they did was I could keep exclusivity of one color, and they would mm-hmm. sell all the other colors of the exact same product to everybody. Uh, and then they were even using my images. And so <laughs> anyway, the, the, the profit went down and I stopped it. But at one point, that was the only one mm-hmm. in Canada and the USA selling those. At one point, that was the only one. And I, from, for two years, I was the only one for probably two years, mm-hmm. which, which basically it's not two years. It's two seasons because they oh, wow. <laughs> cause nobody buys those. And I, here, side note. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People were buying those very, very little quantities, mm-hmm. but they were buying them in the summer when I had mm-hmm. inventory left. They were using them on their knees. Mm-hmm. People that had problems with their knees, they said oh. they would put them around their knees and turn on the heat and mm-hmm. it would help them. Uh, but I mean, that is a very, very low percentage of people. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 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 I think it was a it's a it's a great product because uh, uh, heated scarves because it, you know it's really depend which area do you live like for example New Yorkers well mm-hmm. we need a heated blankets too right <laughs> yes. in order to walk outside <laughs> like I have I have um, 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 uh, thermal. Um, uh, uh, pants and I have a thermal trousers. I have a thermal yeah. exercise wears because you know in New York, you know it's, it's minus. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it sucks here, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm. I mean, I'm in Alberta, Canada, where it can go wow. to negative forty degrees. Ooh, wow. So it's uh, worse there. <laughs> heated jackets, heated vests, socks, and and then the scarves. So yeah. that's I got the idea from. Yeah, and, and you can't sell these one in, in California for sure. No, no. 
<laughs> yeah, I got that idea from a heated jacket. So I contacted a company that was making heated jackets or wow. heated vests, which I thought it was silly. Somebody would making heated vests. Mm-hmm. So you're making it heated because it's cold, but it doesn't have sleeves. Why would you, <laughs> why would you make heated vests, right? Make a jacket. <laughs> but yes, and then they, they, they started making those scars for me. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> so to see if tell me for everybody that's listening if they want to know more about you and more about in bintuli mm-hmm. where do they go to find out so uh definitely that's a that's a very good question they should go to the www.invertuli.com okay so that's our um, uh, website so they have a free trial which is for 30 days they don't have to even put the credit card information it's just everything is free um they just can um, uh, put their first name last name and email and that's it we don't ask for your, your social security or any you know uh, other information i'm just kidding so uh you just need your first and last name and you know email and that's pretty much you need it um, and then, you know, when you're going to connect your store, you know, all the information there, you have a free 30 days to use it. And then if you like it, you move on. If you don't like it, you know, you call Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There, there's no reason not to like it. So, like- yeah, for sure. You know, it, it's, it's, um, you know, sometimes uh, there is a customers who, who, who doesn't have a bad, much understanding. But what we offer is that onboarding call when someone logs in, we definitely walk them through because that's a very critical point where we have to uh, upload the one year of data, of historical data from Amazon to the account. Even though it's automatic, we just want to make sure everything is there. Then if they need a help to setting up the vendors, they need a help to, to set up the system. That's where we come in and help them to set up. So it's the system system is usable for them because otherwise you know they if, if they don't know how to use the system then you know it's it's, it's a difficult but what we can do is that we can help them to get on board and then you know 30 days make sure they are running our support team is 24 7 you know any query anything my guys are pretty much always on you know available you know uh, to answer any query and stuff like that so they can find us on inutuli.com there you go <laughs> you guys heard it to uh-huh. see a free as he is the brother of Omar Riaz, and uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you so much, Quinn. I really, it was really nice talking to you, and especially the 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 scarf thing. I, I'm honestly speaking, I'm gonna go Amazon and look for it because I really need that one because it's really cold outside, and my knees really have some issues. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, they, <laughs> so check it out. They 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 go around. I haven't even looked them up. Mm-hmm. They go around your neck, and it's like the full shape of the neck, oh, and perfect. then and then it has a, a battery pack. Just wow. it's almost like those portable cell phone chargers. Mm-hmm. You can charge your phone with it mm-hmm. too, mm-hmm. and you could put that in your pocket. And that's actually I recommend you keeping the battery pack someplace warm mm-hmm. because the colder it is, the faster it drains. Right. <laughs> so, but. <laughs> They do. I don't sell them anymore, so I'm mm-hmm. not. I'm not trying to sell the, anything here. But <laughs> they did heat up. Perfect. They were really, really nice. warm. Nice. Thank you. Thanks, so. Queen. Really appreciate your time today, and it's really nice talking to you. A lot of uh, good information was shared today. Thank you. It's my mm-hmm. pleasure. Hey, thank you. <laughs>